Hi all, today we are going to discuss the relation between electric field intensity and electric potential in differential form which is also called as the potential gradient. So in order to define the potential gradient, let us consider a equipotential surfaces, two equipotential surfaces having S1 and S2. Let us assume the potential at the equipotential surface 1 is V and the potential at the equipotential surface 2 is V plus delta V. That means the potential is increased as you go from surface 1 to surface 2. Let us assume gap between the surfaces is delta N. So in that case, if you want to calculate the potential difference, this potential difference delta V because V is changed from V plus delta V, this can be obtained by taking negative gradient of E dot dl. This we have already seen in our previous classes, how this comes. So this, let us assume the average value of electric field intensity is EAV. This EAV is average value of electric field intensity. So this I will multiply with delta n. So then also I can get it. Let us take this as equation number 1. So I can calculate from this delta V by delta n. So this will be equal to minus EAV. Let us take it as equation number 2. Now let us take the limit of this delta n tends to 0. This delta V tends to delta n. So automatically this delta V by delta n as the limit is tending to 0, this will become dV by dn. So dV by dn will become the electric potential at a particular point because we are reaching a small infinitesimal small size area. So this I can take as equation number 3. The positive direction of dV by dn is towards increasing potential towards increasing potential so as a quantity is called as a vector quantity is a potential gradient of v so let us assume if an is indicating from a lower potential to higher potential so we can tell my potential gradient will be equal to dv by dn because we have to indicate the direction also in the normal direction where this an indicates the direction from lower to higher potential direction because we are moving from a lower potential higher potential or the potential is increasing so this will be equal to e minus e in the direction of an or this i can simply write as minus e because e is already a vector so i can write my this value that potential gradient is generally defined by the grade v so this i can write as minus e this is what we summarize from this we have already discussed in the previous class how to calculate the gradient of a scalar quantity using the curvilinear coordinate system. So we have discussed in chapter number 1. So I am leaving the link in the iTab above. So you are requested to please refer from there if you want to go the derivation and how to calculate the gradient in an easier way. So here I am directly writing the formula only. So the gradient of V I can write as dou V by dou X in the direction of AX, dou V by dou Y in the direction of AY, dou V by dou Z in the direction of AZ. So this is equal to minus C or otherwise if you are seeing in other coordinates this will be dou V by dou R in the direction of AR, 1 by R into dou V by dou phi in the direction of A phi plus dou V by dou Z in the direction of AZ. This is for the case of cylindrical coordinate system. Same thing in the spherical coordinate system this I can write as dou V by dou R in the direction of AR plus 1 by R into dou V by dou theta in the direction of A theta plus 1 by r sin theta into dou v by dou phi in the direction of a phi. This will be equal to minus c. So to clarify this, how this formula apply and other things, let us take one, two examples so that it will be clear to you. So it is given the value of v is equal to 10 sin theta cos phi divided by r square holds find the field intensity at the point is mentioned 2.5 meters comma minus 60 degrees comma 45 degrees. So seeing this we can tell this belongs to spherical coordinate system. So we have to define in the spherical. So we can define that E is equal to grade V. So grade V will be minus AR into dou by dou R plus A theta divided by R dou by dou theta plus A phi divided by r sin phi dou by dou phi. So this I have to calculate multiply with the value of the voltage. Voltage will be 10 sin theta cos phi divided by 
R square. Using this, I can calculate this. So, when you are doing this, so this will become 10 I can take out. So, the remaining parameters will go inside. So, if you are differentiating this with respect to R, dou by dou R of this one in the AR direction. So, this will become 2 sin theta cos phi. This R square becomes R cube. So, 2 comes on the top. This will be in the direction of AR minus dou by dou theta. Dou theta here sin theta is there. You have to do the differentiation. This becomes cos theta cos phi divided by r into r square becomes r cube in the direction of a theta and the third one will be plus we have to differentiate with respect to phi so dou by dou phi dou by dou phi of cos phi becomes the sin phi so that i can define as sin phi divided by r cube in the direction of a theta. so this is what we get if you are multiplying these two getting this so now let us proceed further. <coughs> so, this I can further simplify as by substituting the value of r is equal to 2.5, I am substituting value of theta is equal to minus 60 degrees and phi is equal to 45 degrees. So, we get this value as minus 0 0.7838 in the direction of a r minus 0 0.226 in the direction of a theta plus 0 0.45 in the direction of a phi volts per meter. So, this way you have to calculate. Let us see another example so that we can correlate and prove that whatever we have derived is correct. So, fields on the axis of a circular loop of charge. So, circular loop of charge. Let us assume a circular loop is there. So, I want to find in the axis. So, let us take it as 0, 0, z. It is varying. Let us assume it is lying along the z axis. So, let us take for example, I am taking some small angle. So, with respect to this x axis, let us assume it is making an angle of phi. So, here I am taking an angle of d phi. So, small d phi area, I want to see what is effect. Let us assume the radius of this one is a and it is having because this is in the circular loop, in the circular loop only it is there. Let us assume this is given by rho l. Rho l is there and I am taking a differential length, small differential length dl. So, I am taking some differential length dl. So, let us take this point as a comma phi comma 0. So, it will vary you have to take the complete line integration of this line charge or a circular loop of charge. So, here I can calculate my value of dq. This dq will be rho l into a into d phi rho l into a d phi because if you want to calculate the value of dl, dl will be equal to a d phi. This we have already seen. This is the value of d phi. How to calculate in an arc? How to calculate the length of the arc? So, this I can write capital R, capital R is equal to square root of A square plus Z square, capital R is this one, this distance, what is the distance from this one. So, now dV will be equal to dQ by 4 pi epsilon R, this will be equal to A rho L d phi divided by 4 pi epsilon into square root of A square plus Z square, this you agree. So, now I, can, I want to calculate the potential, potential is we are varying from phi to 2 pi plus phi because we want to take the integration for the total complete circular loop. So, this will become dv. So, this if you integrate, this will become a rho l divided by 2 epsilon into square root of a square plus z square. This will become equal to q by 4 pi epsilon into square root of a square plus z square. This is what we got. So, from this, if you want to calculate the electric field intensity, the electric field intensity is nothing but negative gradient of v. So, this will become minus dou v by dou z in the direction of z because we have to take in the direction of z because in the z direction we want to calculate. So, if you calculate this one, this will become a rho l divided by 2 epsilon into z a z divided by a square plus z square whole to the power of 3 by 2. So, this will become q by 4 pi epsilon z in the direction of a z divided by a square plus z square whole to the power of 3 by 2 because that rho l if I are converting to charge q. So, q by this one will come. Now, if you are taking the value of a is equal to 0, when the radius is equal to 0, it becomes a point charge. So, let us see for the case of point charge what will come, whether it is satisfying or not. So, if you calculate a is equal to 0, substitute a is equal to 0 in the above equation, this becomes q divided by 4 pi epsilon into z square in the direction of a z. So, this you can see this is same as the field intensity what we have calculated for a point charge at any point. 
so we can tell that whatever the procedure that gradient of v we have taken that is proper only so similarly i have solved one more numerical in the material so material i have provided in the description below so you can download the material from there in the handwritten material i have provided one more example field on the axis of circular disk of charge please try to solve it so that this concept will be completely clear to you so i hope this concept of potential gradient how to calculate the electric field intensity from potential gradient is clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much